Help support Friendo Club by going to patreon.com slash Stephen Larson or clicking join at youtube.com slash Stephen Larson. Access to bonus episodes, question threads for the Going In Raw podcast, and entry to our monthly wrestling predictions challenges. Join the Friendo Club today. Hey, Friendo, Steve here. Hey, Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to. On this episode, we're talking CEO. I was about to say Boston. No, it's CEO. The CEO. 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 Ad nauseum. Made her debut. Mercedes Monet made her debut at Big Business last night in front of like almost 10,000 people from what I understand. got a good crowd, yeah, yeah. Got a really good crowd, and uh, we're going to talk about that and the rest of AEW Dynamite. Uh, But first, let's dive into some of the details behind Mercedes Monet's AEW. CEO. CEO. (laughs) CEO. You know, I can't get out of, dude, I can't get out of my head (laughs) When, when that first CEO showed up. All I can think of, and I know you've seen the, uh, you congratulations, you've been promoted. You're now an elite employee. Yeah, yeah. That character uh, calls themselves uh, boss and CEO on TikTok. Uh, uh, <laughs> and so I just have that stuck in my head. Anyways. Anyways, so yes, Mercedes Monet made her long-anticipated, long-awaited AEW debut during last night's big business. Big business. Addition to Dynamite, Feifel Select has some details on how she ended up in AEW. The sources told Feifel and Mattman Podcast Andrew Zarian that Monet signed her AEW deal a couple of months ago, January, with some sources stating the two sides basically agreed, or could have basically agreed to a deal all the way back in December of 2020. I put 2022 here. That's not right. It's 2023. Yeah. Typo really on my long, part. Yeah. Super long time ago. Uh, Feifel adds. That while Monet did, in fact, have some friendly conversations with WWE, we'd heard that in the past, that at like some point in December, there was some talks. But in December, they went nowhere, apparently. Uh, AEW had already discussed how Monet would debut during the first week of January with debut dates of January 3rd and the following Wednesday, January. I'm guessing that's a Wednesday. I'm totally unprepared today, by the way. January 10th suggested, but Monet hadn't been medically cleared at that point. Fightful learned by January 4th that AEW was playing to uh, announce Big business and debut Monet at big business. So this has been in the works for a couple months now. Two months now. Over two months. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I, you have to appreciate that they, A, waited mm-hmm. because apparently her injury was pretty darn serious. Well, I mean, according to her, she was told that it could be career threatening. And then she gave the, the doctors a big old finger wag and said, yeah. no, man, I'm I'm big business. I'm going to keep on wrestling. Well, and the spiteful thing, she had to have two, according to the spiteful thing, she had to have two surgeries on her ankle. Yeah, that's 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 rough. So that's that's pretty bad. That's a bad it break. Is. It is. Uh, so. Um, so, yeah, like you said, this has been uh, in the works for a while. And, you know, you got to appreciate that. And I know Tony Khan had tweeted this out ages ago. Probably around the time he was, you know, locking down all these various free agent signings because there's been three pretty big ones. Will Ospreay, oh, Kaz- ones, yeah, Kazuchika Okada, and, and and Boston CEO Mercedes Monet. Um, and he had tweeted something along the lines of AEW AEW's 2024 is going to be much like AEW's 2021, which of course he brought in CM Punk, Adam Cole, Brian Danielson, and Ruby Soho. You know, in this big wave you know, all in, uh, all, sorry, all out 2021 was like a mm-hmm. big deal where like everybody mm-hmm. showed up. It's punk mm-hmm. had his first match there. They had done his debut weeks earlier. And so it's good for the company to get a big burst of energy, you know, especially now I know we're three months into 2024, but heading, you know, forward trying to put 2023 and 2022 largely behind them because yes. they were not great years for the company. And it seems no. like, this might be the first year they uh, they reach profitability with these new TV deals. Should that come to pass, there yeah. are other avenues of monetization that they can still explore with the Ring of Honor library, with the you know the AEW library for that matter, um, on streaming services and some possible opportunities with Max and this other sports streaming service coming up. So things right now are looking pretty good for AEW. Not you know uh, a perfect probably. Not where they uh, would like to be, but the the signs ahead are, are are pretty pretty positive right now for AEW, anyways. And I think yeah. 
you know, there, there have been some, uh, I, I've been enjoying their programming as of late, especially dynamite. I think still to a degree, like collision is kind of touch and go yeah. in terms of like just how much meat you're getting in your, in your, with your stories and everything. But, uh, but yeah, with, with the few exceptions, I thought last night's dynamite was along the same lines. I thought that was pretty decent. Yeah, I thought so too. I thought the you know they 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 followed the template they did with first dance with CM Punk's debut having Mercedes open the show, drop a promo, um, and and but unlike Phil's debut, I believe I don't remember it was only three years ago, but I don't recall. I don't remember him showing up at the end. I could be wrong about that. Um, oh whereas... yeah, no, I think no. He just they didn't set anything up for him in terms of where it's going to lead to besides him like name dropping some people during yeah, his promo including but, Darby I think it is promo and that's who his first opponent back was but yeah um but then you know we had uh Riho versus Willow main event and it was a really good really good match really good mm-hmm. match and then Mercedes comes uh, out to the ring to make the save after Julia Hart and Sky Blue attack Willow um having the show bookended with Mercedes having her make that brief appearance backstage, kind of introducing herself to Riho. Um, it was it was good to see that, hey, she is a high-profile signing, not only giving her essentially her own branded debut episode of Dynamite, she's the focus of said show. And I guess the hope is with her signing comes a renewed emphasis on on stronger booking for the women's division. And giving them more TV time, more storylines, more matches. That's the hope because we had the main event, Willow and Riho. We had Deanna Prazzo, uh dropping a promo during the show. Was there something else? Uh, I don't know. I'm scrolling through real I'm fast. I'm looking through uh, as well. Yeah. No, no, that was it. That was it. Yeah, that was still it. a little to be desired, especially yeah. when you have, especially when you have a Chris Jericho and a Hook match, which really, really didn't need to be on dialogue. That kind of that should have been a rampage, honestly. Yeah, 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 exactly. You know, the one one positive sign I see as it pertains to how they're going to be treating the women's division is that seemingly, uh, you know, you've got you've got Willow sort of mixing it up in the TBS title division, which could still end up swinging towards a, a Statlander. Wait, did they already do Statland? Did they already do Statlander, Julia? Okay, they uh, already did. Uh, yeah, did they, they did that. No, they did a tag match. They, they did the tag, they did a match, tag match, match, yeah, in the kickoff show. Yeah. And I know Statlander just lost to Riho, which is kind of weird. But um, but it's I'll put it this way: it seems like there are potential for several programs going on at the same time. Well, then you introduce Mercedes here. Sorry to interrupt. You introduce Mercedes here into the TBS title picture. Well, that's significant. Save. Yeah, what I was yeah. going to say is that's significant because she's not approaching Tony Storm. And they're not getting rid of that anytime soon. That's kind of a big deal, the Tony Storm, Deanna Perrazzo stuff. So Mercedes goes after the TBS title or just Willow, and they'll have a match at Dynasty maybe. Mm -hmm. You know, you throw in Perrazzo, Tony Storm too. You've got two women's matches there for Dynasty. And, oh, my God, a potential for a third if you're going to do – I mean, if you're going to do TBS title, Statlander – Julia Hart, Willow, Mercedes, because they have history going back to New Japan stuff, the whole injury. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got Tony Storm, Deanna Perrazzo, and they can they can choose to either put all three of those on pay-per-view or, you know, the one thing that really they, that I think AEW might start focusing on, especially with the potential of these TV deals, which are only potential until they've been signed, is yeah. you got to get these TVs to be a bit more urgent and exciting. And how do you do that by boosting the attendance and not every episode of dynamite can be big business. So they want every episode to be big business. They want to get that large uh, gate. They want to sell a lot of tickets. They want every show to be, I'll put it this way. Not all of them can be branded big business. I'll put it this way. They could have every episode of Dynamite be lowercase big business yes. if they get the attendance up, if they get the excitement up. Um, however, there's only one capital B big business, Larson. Yes. And yes. we saw, and it saw it last, last night. night. We saw it last night. <laughs> we did see it last night. Um, yeah. Uh, it, like in terms of the, the presentation of Mercedes Monet, we've mentioned by singing it, her new theme, her AEW theme, CEO, CEO. That caught on right away. Well, you know, man, (laughs) here's the thing. When you have in the largest possible font 
in the in 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 the most obvious beat rhythm whatever ceo yeah. the crowd is going to respond to that oh, they're yeah. going to do what you want oh, them to yeah, do oh yeah absolutely it, it, it the, the brilliance is in the simplicity of it you know <laughs> If you want to call it, you know, however you want to you're describe right, it. You're right. You're right. No, you're the right. The brilliance is in the simplicity. Yes, you get the giant CEO up there on the Tron in the largest pot font you could possibly fit up there. You have the cadence of the chant be exactly how, like, chants are just chanted at stadiums. Really what they could have done, though, is, like, put, like, you know, do a little Photoshop of, of like, her head on top of, like, you know. Oh, you, know, you want to do the bouncing the bouncing lyrics thing yeah so that they know for sure that they're supposed to be you know chanting, chanting ceo, CEO oh, along CEO. with the song i'll be honest i like the uh what did they what did they sample before it was like oh Chris it was Cross? Chris cross's jump yeah it was Chris dun, cross's jump dun, dun, monet dun, i'll be honest dun, with you I, dun, I prefer that monet. one the one last night maybe i'll get used to it i i the, the ceo thing was in my in my estimation and, and look i'm trying to keep things positive here because i thought Otherwise, her presentation was off the oh, charts. Oh, off the charts. She always has amazing outfits. Oh, her, yeah. You know, at the end when she took off the jacket, it was like, oh, my goodness gracious. That's that's a hell of an outfit right now. Yeah. Uh, you know, the presentation's off the charts. What they do with the hair these days where they put little cool little, like, drawings. Graphics, and, essentially. I know. <laughs> <laughs> graphics into the hair. Naomi does the same. Oh, my gosh. That looks so cool. Yeah. Um, and I know I sound like a 65-year-old right now, but, man, I am amazed by the magic of this technology, Larson. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that technology at a certain point just comes off like magic to people? Oh yeah, Somebody yeah, I can believe that. that. I can believe that. I can believe um, that. So yeah, the presentation on the charts the song, in my opinion, leaves a little bit to be desired. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I wonder what the theme if it starts off with the CEO bit, but then there there is some 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 vocals after that, but then it just kind of loops, you know, and it goes back to the CEO chant. Well, let me ask you this: This is an important sure. question. Sure. In her New Japan slash indie theme, it was sampling Criss Cross's Jump. Yeah. What other early 90s child band <laughs> would, <laughs> would you sample next? That'd be another bad creation, ABC. <laughs> It'd be another bad creation. ABC. Yeah. ABC. Yeah. <laughs> what was their song? Oh, was it shoot. Monica? Yeah, Wasn't there a song so. called Monica or something like? What was it? I think so. <laughs> Another bad. That's exactly what I was. That's the only other child band I can think of from back then. I'm sure there are others. Oh man. Uh, so yeah. No, I thought I thought it was good, and I think that there are some good signs ahead for the women's division. But as always, you know, we'll we'll see what happens if Tony Khan looks at the ratings and is like, oh my god, this is a disaster. Then he's going to go back to what he knows, you know, just long ass yeah, matches with the dudes. <laughs> and that's, yeah, that's going to be a bunch of 10 man matches, you know, I know filler tag matches on pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any update on what another bad creation? You know, I look at these songs and none of them necessarily ring a bell. Although I know Aisha. it was Aisha. Oh, Aisha. Why did I yes, think it was Monica? I Aisha. Yeah, that's you want the girl in my <laughs> Yeah, now I can hear that one. Now I can hear it. Oh man! Um, I mean, there's there's a lot to talk about. Let's talk about Will Osprey. He's another. Let's talk about all the new signings. We'll get to Will Osprey, then we'll talk about Okada. Um, I know there is. I I feel like this was speculation on Meltzer's part, but it's getting it's going around as if it's news. The wording you know, was speculation that Meltzer was talking about why Triple H wasn't more aggressive in signing Will Osprey, and it sounds like, based on my reading of the quote, was that it was he was Meltzer was speculating that maybe Triple H didn't know. Osprey was as strong as what he is on the mic. Here's the thing. I don't know how many people knew how strong Osprey was going to be on the mic in a, a American television wrestling setting. Like he's yeah. done good work in, in new Japan, but the setting is so different. You know, it's the backstage stuff for the most part. It's the backstage press conference type stuff, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, where they don't do extended in ring interview segments for the most part, you know, after the pay-per-view, if you win the match, you get, you get to talk for a few minutes generally. And, and thank the crowd and and celebrate a little bit, but I don't I, I don't know how many six minute long promos he did or interviews he did in the mm -hmm. ring in front of a live audience. Yeah, in his yeah. career. So what's interesting, and I'm I'm curious to hear what you have to say about this. But when I look back at New Japan, within New Japan, Jay White came off as a stronger presence. In my in my in my eyes, and I don't yeah. think there's like a big gulf. I don't think it's like no, by a no, wide no. margin. 
Jay White had such a presence in New Japan that I don't think has translated as well in AEW. I don't think it's a one-to-one -one transfer. I think that there is, sometimes his promos are kind of long. Yeah. They kind of go on to a, a bit too much. Uh, he needs to find a way to make these a bit more efficient. He does have a great little sort of cadence the way he talks. I yeah. like that, but some of yeah. it's too long. Will Ospreay, I am, I'm not going to say I'm necessarily surprised, but I am pleasantly surprised at just how effective he has been because translating, and this is exactly what you're getting at, translating from your promos in New Japan to American cable television, it's a completely different thing. They don't do things like they do in on cable television in WWE and AEW in New Japan. They just don't. No. no. But it has it has been really effective. He is, so to speak, the total package yeah. in AEW. And of course, I'm not talking yeah. about Lex Luger. No. Um, and uh, and yeah, I'm I'm looking at this quote here. This is from Cultaholic. They've got what looks to be a uh, a, a, oh, a, a transcript. He says, I just think that if Triple H is watching this, talking about Osprey's promo at Big Business, he's going like, holy fuck. They know he's a good wrestler, but I don't think they know that he's a charismatic person and talker and can get over. <clears throat> I know people in WWE when this was going down, it was becoming very clear he was going to AEW, not WWE, and they, WWE, offered a lot less money. I know people there were going like, he, Triple H, didn't realize they knew, but he just didn't realize he just thought, ah, oh, he's one of these great workers. So it's like Meltzer getting this from people who are claiming to know what triple H is thinking, yeah. which is like really thin, you know, sourcing yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Um, but I think that there is an honestly, from what Will Ospreay said, WWE would have had to have offered basically raw gate technology for Osprey to commit to WWE, the guy seems to be, you know, wonderfully committed to his family and their yep. needs and what they need. Yep. And uh, and and AEW is offering that. I don't know that WWE, even if they saw this version of Will Osprey, would be like, yeah, you can you can fly in once a week for our televisions. You know, you can have a Brock Lesnar schedule, so to speak, yeah, yeah. where you don't have to be there all the time. I don't know that they would have given like a fresh dude when they don't know that he's all this. Yeah. Um, I don't know that they would have given him that deal. Maybe if he really brings AEW up to AEW up to another level in three years, they'll wheel out everything for him to That's try to get possible. him. Entirely possible. But I don't know. This kind of I'll be honest, like this kind of talk, I don't know, man. It's like you want to criticize. <laughs> You want to criticize the fans for being tribalistic. This kind of stuff just sort of feeds into it, in my opinion. It does. It does. Because like I said, I don't know if anybody, anybody, because, you know, what we see in, in New Japan prior to him coming in AEW is like, okay, yeah, he could talk. He's got charisma. Obviously, he delivers in the ring. But putting it all together in a completely different setting, in a completely different atmosphere, um, on live television on a weekly basis, I didn't know I didn't know he could deliver on a consistent basis. And granted, it's only been a handful of weeks, but hey, it's I, but that's the, isn't that the crazy promos thing? he's had have been, all been really, really good out the gate. That's the yeah. crazy thing. From yeah. day one, he had that connection. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it really does seem like the ideal fit in so many ways. Look, man, I, I think it would be absolutely amazing if you and I got to sit here and and critique and review just awesome episodes of dynamite and collision along with awesome episodes of raw. I'm not, look, I don't want a W to be, you know, bad. I want it to be Same. awesome. And so, yeah. Hey man, if that means this is the best place for Will Ospreay for his family, for the money, um, you know, that that's fantastic. I think it's a terrific place for him. And I think it's been proven in a very short period of time mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. this is the ideal fit for him. Yeah. At this stage in his career. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, on that same note, let's talk about Okada. Um, yeah, a match. Yeah, he and the Young Bucks had a promo. I guess he had a match with the Young Bucks, and they had a promo bit backstage. In terms of delivering the character stuff, so far it's been a home run for Okada. And it hasn't been huge. You know, like there's that backstage bit where uh, they're talking about Pac coming back, and they're sitting down. Uh, like in a lounge or something, and, and and they're asking Okada, like, what are you gonna now that you have all this money? What are you gonna do? And he says, I'm gonna buy a Kia. And they're like, what? Really? He's like, no, I'm gonna get a Ferrari. You know, it's like he's showing <laughs> yeah. a, a a side of himself that we didn't necessarily see at least towards the latter run is in, in New Japan. Yeah. And last night when they had this interview with Marvez, 
And he looks in camera and goes, Eddie, I'm coming after you. Mm -hmm. But anyway, he says to Marvez, why, did, why haven't you wished Matthew a happy birthday? And Marvez, oh, so it says, oh, I'm sorry. Happy birthday, Matt. And no. Goes, no, 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 no. Sing it. Sing it. <laughs> so I'll play for a moment devil's advocate here because I'm with you. Okada is, I, I love, and I did not expect this oh, version character, of Okada. I was going to say this. The character work during the match, too, was awesome. Yeah. Oh, it's I so love it. It's so fitting in line with what he's doing out of the ring as well. It's so he's, good. He's having a ton of fun. He's arrogant. He's kind of evil, and he's a world beater. And I think that's what's really going to put it together. My only, my only apprehension here is you and I appreciate this so much more because of what we know. Because we followed a lot of Kazuchika Okada in New yeah. Japan. If you don't know about Okada and you're coming into this you know, you're like, man, I only watch AEW. I don't watch New Japan. All I know is the legend of Okada. I don't really know anything else about him. <sighs> you might be confused because it, there's 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 a jokey element to it. Um, there and 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 you might it might be one of those things where people are like, yeah, I don't get it. Like this guy's back there telling people to sing. He seems like he's sort of goofing a little bit. In the ring, he's still really, really good. Yeah. And so it'll be interesting to see just how it proves out. I think it's the right way to go, but it'll be interesting to see what the reaction is for people if they really get behind him in a way that's palpable in the arenas and he becomes like a draw for people to show up, um, you know, people that aren't already there because they they enjoy New Japan and his work in mm -hmm. New Japan. Mm -hmm. um, but regardless, I really enjoyed. I think it's awesome. And I think that once he's on a streak because you cannot have this guy lose ever for like a really long time and he's got to be like hogan 98 levels of you know of, of of beating people in the ring not including the lex luger moment um that's two luger references already already wow we're only 20 minutes into the show i know right should be three by now um so so yeah like if you have this guy just be an absolute world beater uh, then I think that, that that it'll work really, really well. But I wonder if in the meantime, people who are fresh to the guys like this guy's kind of a goof right now. Yeah, no, I get that. Is is you see, in terms of how they're presented for the TV audience, you see Osprey, who's kind of instantly being presented as the main event guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's getting the 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 second hour promo spot. He's getting awesome reactions from the crowd. Uh, he's getting put in matches to showcase how awesome of a wrestler he is. Mm -hmm. And so much of what his presentation is, is Will Ospreay's best wrestler in the world. He's here to prove it every week. Mm -hmm. That's not Okada's presentation right now. Right. Okada's presentation is we're going to showcase a different aspect of his personality that uh, wrestling audiences might not have seen or at least not have seen for a while. Mm -hmm. And... We're going to focus on the chemistry and relationship he already has with the Young Bucks and, and, and elevate all three of them based on their personality. They're all fantastic wrestlers, but so much of what they're doing now so far after two, three weeks is so focused, even in the ring, on their characters and personalities and not so much on the fact that they're all top-tier world-class wrestlers. And it's just a difference in presentation and based on how AEW presents itself with such an emphasis on the in-ring product. Because of that, it feels like ah, Osprey is going to be the focus of an extended singles push. Okada is 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 really just showcasing personality right now, and I'm not saying one way is better than the other, but it kind of seems like in terms of how they're being presented to the AEW audience, Osprey is the guy that's going to get the massive push right now. That's yeah, what it feels yeah. like, you know. And, I, and if yeah. if you're not familiar, as you mentioned with Okada's work, you're thinking, I've heard so much about this guy. Why is he kind of in the mid card right now? Mm -hmm, yeah, contending for a mid card title. Yeah. 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 It'll be interesting to see. And I, and again, it's, it's also sort of the thing where the young bucks and Tony Khan, they've got, you know, now five years of experience under their belts doing this. Mm -hmm. This is unlike anything they've done before. They are because they're taking sort of an NWO template here without, you know, expanding, but yeah, 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 yeah. That'd be kind of interesting if they, if they took a, to a degree that approach where they do expand the elite. So by the time Kenny gets it, it's like 10 people in the new elite. Um, and I don't know if they're going to do that, but 
but they are sort of doing that. We're like, you know, the top tag team. Uh, and and I'm not talking about like the invasion aspect of it, yeah, but the top yeah, tag the top team, top tag team plus an incoming, plus an incoming well, I guess, big. I guess Hogan you know, was actually already there before. It's kind of like the inverse. Yeah, ending. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, the 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 the, the general blueprint is there: a, a top name tag team along with like a top singles guy. Um, but yep. you're right; it is, it is the inverse. Um, and so I don't know. I don't know how it's going to play out, but I I enjoy it, and I think that. It'll be interesting to see how they build him, how they move this along, and how effective it's going to be, given that they've never really done anything like this before, because it is it is a unique situation. It is, and it, it, it might end up being a situation where short-term, it might, as you mentioned, might confuse some uh, viewers of AEW who might not be totally familiar with Okada's work, but it might, in the long run, be a massive benefit for him, because from the, gr- the ground level essentially from day one he's allowed the opportunity to really showcase his personality the wrestling skills are given at this point you know yeah, Sh- yeah. really showcase the case the personality help get himself over with AEW fans that way so that when he's having these 30 minute wrestling clinics made of any pay-per-views people are so invested in the character mm-hmm, yeah that the, the, the these matches resonate so much more yeah, I did. I think maybe at some point, maybe before his first match, I'm sorry, his first big singles match probably was going to go down at Dynasty. Have they, they announced what's going to happen? Yeah, he's Dynasty? facing Eddie next week. Okay, that's going to be his first singles match. For okay. just the Continental uh, title. Just that one. Not the New oh. Japan, not the Ring of Honor one. They said oh, so that's going to be his title. They're separating okay. the Continental. So he's just going to have that title. Okay. He's going to have the Continental title, yeah. Okay. I mean, hey, that's a way to build up that title. Yeah. Um, he needs to do something incredibly violent, yeah. Soon, because he needs to do something like what ba- uh, the Bang Bang Gang just did. He needs to do something like that. He needs some. Who, what was the, what's the dude in, in Noah? Remember last year when he just? Completed? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Ki- was that Kiyomiya? Kiyomiya, Kiyomiya. Yeah. yeah. He needs Gosh, to do something so, so overwhelmingly violent to show people. Number one, he's got to kill Eddie, and then on top of that. He's got to really kill Eddie, you know, like he's got to completely destroy him like after mm-hmm. the bell. Like, how dare you even step into the ring with me? Mm-hmm. So people understand when he tells Marvez, no, sing it. Yeah, he might be delivering it in, in a mildly comical way, There's but he will it. fuck you up. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they handle that. Uh, but I, I, I really I really enjoy uh, Okada in this. You and I were always huge fans. Once you, once he got past, you know, that 2017 era of, you know, the match with Shibata, which was just inc- too violent. Um, and then eventually we got around to Balloon Okada and you oh, see this so whole good. other side of his personality. So it's like, oh, this guy is, he's so well-rounded. Mm-hmm. He is so, he's so good. He's so, it's that element that just doesn't take it too seriously. But then once he gets in there, everything's sacred. Oh, it's so good. It's, it's so, so good. good. It really is. It really yeah. is. This episode of Going In Raw is sponsored by BetterHelp, Steve. Mm, yes. Got questions for you. In fact, two of them. What would you do if you lived on the Kota Ibushi schedule, the famed Kota Ibushi schedule, and could add an extra hour to your day? Another question. How about this? If you could bend the reality of our universe and give yourself unlimited time, how would you use it? You're a creative guy. I'm sure you have tons of ideas. I mean, yeah, I do. I've got a lot of ideas. Like Oppenheimer had a lot of ideas because he was able to bend time and space. Unfortunately, I'm neither Kota Ibushi nor am I Oppenheimer. So I can't grant myself unlimited time. So like everybody else on planet Earth, if there's something special or important I want to fit into my schedule, I just I got to make it a priority. I can't bend space and time. I'm with you there. You know, I've talked about it extensively before, but back in my mid-20s, I was having a lot of trouble prioritizing what was important to me due to severe anxiety, and therapy helped me figure out what mattered to me most so I can make an effort to put those things first and foremost in my life. And if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. BetterHelp is completely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited for your schedule. All you got to do to get started is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and then you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash raw today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com 
slash raw. So Dynamite started with uh, uh, Renee Paquette uh, talking about what's to come on the show. Did they? I missed the very, very beginning. Did they do the, the cool intro again? Oh, I didn't catch that either. I, just, I, I, I skipped ahead. Um, I turned Because, you know, my recording Renee. starts with the tail end of what? Big, Big Bang, Bang Theory, Theory or whatever. So I skipped ahead, and the first thing I saw was a car pulling into an arena. Ah, uh, okay. So, yeah, Renee was on there first, and she was talking about what we're going to see tonight. Um, but then the car showed up. And then as the door opened, we cut to the arena. And uh, first thing we get is CEO, 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 CEO. So, so yes, Mercedes. Mercedes Monet. Yeah, she comes out. She says, Boston, I'm home. She says, if you guys can feel my heart right now, it's beating out of my chest. But first and foremost, I want to say thank you. Thank you for having my back these past two years. Thank you for giving me the courage and the strength to be here. Thank you. For sticking with me through all my lows, highs, my milestones, titles, all my moments. Thank you. And trust me, we're going to go. We're going to be being creating so much magic and so many moments together. Because every single one of you, you're the reason why I'm here. So thank you. And the crowd says, CEO. Yeah, there you go. Larson is crowd here. Yeah. And then she says, I love you. And if you only knew how much tonight means to me, how much wrestling means to me in so many ways, wrestling has changed and saved my life. Starts talking about Eddie Guerrero. Uh, she says, my dreams led me to a women's evolution over at those other guys. So my dreams made me become the first woman ever main event at pay-per-view over at those other guys. Uh, she said, in this, very, in this very building, she said, my dream started when I was 10 years old. And at 13, I dropped out of school to take care of my brother, Joshua. Then at 18 and only 90 pounds, I went to North Andover, Massachusetts to a place called Chaotic Wrestling. Where I began my dream, and that dream has become the greatest women's wrestler of all time. She says, I want you to know if I can do it, you could do it too. Which objection, I can't do that, Larson. I'm not, I'm way too old. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. So, like, really, I mean, you're she should you're be like, only, hey, you're, you're, hold on, you're only 10 years older than the DDP was when he first started <laughs> wrestling, okay? 10 years old. Oh my god, I'm 10 years older than DDP was. I have no hope. What's uh, I think Boogeyman started around like 40 or so. Yeah, <laughs> there's still hope for you. Get in the ring. Hey, take you know bumps. what? I will say this on the way back from the dentist today, I did take Mammoth and McDonald's and I did not get any myself. Said I came home and I had some scrambled eggs. Wow. Yes. You responsible. <laughs> so so Take I'm Take care well of that body. Get in the ring, Steve. I'm going to become the greatest woman's wrestler of all time, Larson. <laughs> so anyways, she says, let's get down to business. She says, you want to know why I'm here? Because I need to be here. Because WWE <laughs> said, no, we don't have the money right now. No, she says, I want to be here. AW is the only place where this revolution can be global. We're going to make that happen. I've been watching week upon week upon week. And everybody in that locker room, I can't wait to tear it up with all of y'all. But let's start with our main event tonight. Rio versus Willow Nightingale. Now, Willow, you and I got a lot of unfinished business. But right now, a big business. Mercedes Monet is all elite. So to our chairman, Tony Khan, thank you for the tweet. And all they, put the, the, they put the graphic up on the Tron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that she called it a tweet and not a post or an X. What the fuck they want to call it? And to all the AW fans, say hello to your new... C-E-O, 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 correct. C-E-O. So the uh, first match of the night is Samoa Joe versus Wardlow. Before we get there, though, we got a Wardlow interview. So Renee asked for Wardlow, what do you, sorry, asked Joe, what do you expect from Wardlow tonight? And Joe says, what do I expect tonight? Tonight feels a little different. It feels like money. Wardlow, it doesn't feel different as you. Once again, you've been sent forth by lesser men to pay for crimes you did not commit. Or did you? See, Warlow, I have not forgotten what happened the last time we were in the ring together. I have not forgotten what debts need to be paid in Wardlow. You're far, far overdue. Tonight, Warlow, you'll learn two things. One, I'm taking no quarter, and this is the biggest mistake of your career. Two, Samoa Joe, don't lose championships at the guard. He's yeah, so good. man. Yeah, he Gosh wasn't going to so lose that That last one got a good either. pop from the crowd. Big pop. Uh, after that, we had uh, a video package. Oh, this Story time with Adam Cole. What's that? This was corny. <laughs> he talks about Wardlow's career. Says he's going to beat Joe. He talked about MJF. I mean, they literally had a storybook. Well, it's story time. Yeah, I'm aware of that, but you don't have to make it. It's not, it doesn't have to be a literal thing. Well, it was back in Ring of Honor. 
You know, yeah. like, yeah, no, it was cheesy then, too. It was even yeah. worse back then because Ring of Honor would always shoot their stuff like it was dog shit. But, like, but like you know, Chugs had his khakis on and, and, and I don't know. Mm, didn't like it, huh? No, it was Kingdom! Was Kingdom! Well, then you should have been happy that uh, Samoa Joe made Wardlow pass out. <laughs> Kingdom! <laughs> hey, did Wardlow, did Wardlow have a couple of, like, couple of, like, like his eyes? They look kind of fucked up to you? Look like oh, he had, like... Notice. Okay, later maybe he got some 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 dingers on the match or something, because uh, like he towards was the, bleeding from his nose or mouth or something like that. It was kind of a mess towards the finish of the match. I swear I looked and I was like, "What? His eyes look like they're they, he got knocked." Like a match, I guess, huh? Maybe I won't, well, Joe. So I don't know. So yeah, uh, Wardlow was a mess. Try as he may, you know, getting even. Even tried the uh, the old. Uh, uh, it was like it wasn't even a poke to the eye. It was like a digging in the eyes. Yeah, he had he had a thumb and a finger in there. Yeah, for for a couple days. Uh, but uh, but yeah, Wardlow uh, ends up getting uh, the pass out treatment from Joe. So back to square one with you, Wardlow. Yep, seems that way. So after the match ends, after Wardlow passes out, Swerve and Prince Nana come out to the ramp. Security tries to keep him from getting the ring, but Swerve fights them all off with a fistful of chain. mm Hmm. So he comes to the ring. Joe slides out, and as he's walking up the ramp, there's one security guard on the ramp still selling the, the effects of the punch from Swerve, and Joe just very casually kicks him off the ramp and keeps that him That was walking. pretty good. I'm glad that indie, it was pretty great. indie wrestler security guard uh, you know, made something of it there. Yeah. Uh, after that, we had uh, the Elite being interviewed earlier today. Marvez tried to get a word with the Bucks and Okada. They come down an escalator. Marvez asks Okada why he signed with the Elite. Nick Jackson is so good in all of these, and Matt Jackson is almost unwatchable. <laughs> it's so striking at how different they are. I, you know, here's the thing. I wouldn't, at least from my perspective, I wouldn't consider Matt Jackson unwatchable. Sure. It feels like in this character, in this presentation, everything that makes him kind of a, an obnoxious promo or interview is channeled through this character, and it works for the character. So it doesn't necessarily bother me. If this was babyface Matt Jackson with the same kind of demeanor, which is kind of what it is, then yeah, I get it. But the character's supposed to be obnoxious. I'll go into it with an open mind next time. Sure. There you go. Yeah. Look, go into it with a new perspective, and maybe maybe he'll he'll convince you that he's doing decent work here. Hey, you know what, man? Didn't go to Not McDonald's Not as good as his today. brother, but decent work. Didn't go to McDonald's today. I've got a new goal. Top woman's wrestler of all time. And I'm going to keep my mind open to Matt Jackson. How about Here's that? the thing. Maybe you're 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 a little grumpy about Matt Jackson here because you didn't get McDonald's. You got yourself a McGriddle. You got yourself the two cheeseburger meal. Oh, Man, yeah. you'd be happy. Hold on a second. What? One or both? Either. Not both. Either. <laughs> I said or, didn't I? <laughs> well, I didn't have a choice. It was already the lunch menu, so I couldn't oh, have yeah. had a that's, that's a bummer that you can't get breakfast at McDonald's after, what, 1030, whatever. Like this. It's a blessing because, brother, I'd be there all the time. Anyway, uh, so Nick says, have some respect for the best, best wrestler alive. What are you, best friends with this man? Show more respect and call him by his full ass name. <laughs> I've seen the passport. He said, call him by his full ass name. I've seen the passport. Have you seen the passport? It's printed. The Rainmaker, Kazuchika Okada. Show him more respect. And then Matt steps in. You're doing a great job, Alex. We'll circle back to Okada in just one second, but I'll take that first question. Why did Okada join the elite? I mean, can't you feel the synergy? The three best pro athletes in the world? That is elite. We're talking 14 years of friendship that spans the globe. This guy has helped us out when we were all at our lowest of lows, and we've helped him out too. If we really want to get technical, we can give you about 14 million other reasons he joined the elite. Right, Make? <laughs> he yeah, called, yeah, like him, he calls make. him Make. That was funny. That, was, that funny. was funny. And so Okada says, Penta, Pack, Eddie, I'm coming for you. Anyways, he says to Marvez, say happy birthday to Matt. And Alex just goes, oh, all right, sorry, happy birthday. And again, we said this at the beginning, but it bears repeating because it was so good. And Okada just goes, no, 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 no. <laughs> Sing it. Sing it. And he has a big smile on his face. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly the moment I text you. Oh my God, Okada is great. And then you text me like a couple hours yeah. later when you yeah, saw when that. Yeah, I finally watched it. It's so good. I love it. I wanted to so watch much. it earlier, but I had my eyes dilated yesterday and for about, I don't know, four hours. I couldn't really see that well. Yeah, good news. Dude. My eyes are healthy, though. You going to get that LASIK? No, I don't. I think it's, I think I'm past the point of that maybe being a possibility. What? No. I don't know if they on. could do that when you're entering the phase where you need bifocal, Steve. 
Well, you won't need bifocals. You'll just need reading glasses. Yeah, that's true. Because the top part now. of the bifocal will be the LASIK. Yeah. So well, they're giving that. me something called multifocal contacts. Oh, they do that now? That apparently is a new thing. Technology is crazy. It's crazy. It seems like <laughs> magic, as you're, you know, that's what you're referring to earlier. <laughs> you tell that to the optometrist. <gasps> multifocal contact lenses? That must be magic. Let's see what he has to say about that. I'll they're let like, you know in a week or so. They're like, you're an idiot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so oh my got, god. Well, yeah, you could see like what if like it increases your peripheral vision by like 30%. I don't know. But here's the and, thing like, like with all of a sudden we get know. to the basketball court and it's like you see the the, the basket and it's like it's like limitless, you know? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Maybe my vision has been holding me back this whole time. I know. But I don't know how these multifocal gimmicks work. I know how bifocals work. You got one prescription on the top, the other prescription at the bottom. You want to look, I think far, you got to look at the top part, you want to read look at the bottom part. I get it. I just but when the when the lens is on your eye, you can't I just pray, I just pray to Jeebus himself that it's not like everything else in the world that just gives you a headache. <laughs> oh, it will, I'm sure, for a little bit. Whenever I change prescriptions, it always gives me a headache. Oh, man, but once once, once you're over that phase, yeah, it's going to be like, you know, target initiated, I know, throw ball. I know. HUD showing up, yeah. <laughs> you're going to look at all the places you can target on my body. Target exactly. ankles, target knees, exactly. target I'll, hip. I'll look and I'll see the perfect arc for my jump shot. <laughs> <laughs> you'll see 15 possibilities in front of you all exactly. flashing uh, analysis paralysis at that point yeah so anyways uh after that we had uh the match we had uh the young bucks and okada versus pentagon pack and eddie kingston uh let's see here so yeah this finished with uh what was this okada hitting a rainmaker on eddie after nick low blows eddie kingston yeah, that's right. Did that surprise you that they didn't have Pentagon? Because uh... Okada, man, they're not going to have... Eddie's not beating Okada, no. He's not beating Okada, but... The... Well, they usually don't wonk finishes. Boy, that'd be lame. Just give him that stupid Continental Crown. I know, I know. It's a useless title anyways. Well, I mean, Okada's hands, it might not be. That's more like it, exactly, yeah. Because then you the could do is you can have Okada defend the Continental title against Pac at the pay-per-view. And that match will get people talking because that'll be fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and you got the bastard, Pack, the bastard, taking on uh, me, Okada. From a character standpoint, there's some interesting stuff they could do there. Yeah, absolutely. That yeah. could be really good. Uh, but yeah, next they announced right after this that Eddie's going to defend the Continental title, just the Continental title, not the full three belts against Okada next. Hey, week. if this has been like a long, if this has been like a long game, then. Man, yeah, they've just been building Eddie up with all these wins over Danielson just to lose to Okada. Well, 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 all right. And Eddie's still, Eddie still have two belts. Does he, uh, from what I understand, like, I don't know, people have said Eddie doesn't show up in Ring of Honor. <laughs> Maybe now he will. <laughs> Maybe now he will. He's got one less obligation defending the Continental title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe he will show up in Ring of Honor. I don't know. This was a fun match, from especially from, like, a character perspective. Because mm -hmm. the young bucks were doing their thing, Okada doing his thing, Pac being the bastard, bastard. you know, Eddie being Eddie, Penta being Penta. There was this great bit where where Penta was trying to give Okada a backstabber in the corner, and Okada grabbed onto the top ropes to block it, and Penta grabs him by his hair and bends his head back and talks trash to him. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, which I ain't cool. seen before. That was really cool. That was pretty neat. Yeah, that's pretty great. Uh, then we had a uh, Copeland. Christian video package. They got that uh, I Quit match next week in Toronto for that TNT title. You got to think Cope's winning that belt. And I think that'd be awesome for the TNT title. I mean, dude, you think about it at that point. You got Roderick Strong, who I love, with the, uh, the IC title, I guess you can call it. International, International title. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, man, think about it. You got Cope with the TNT title. You got Joe Rock in the world title. And then you got Okada with the other mid title. Oh, my Another gosh. Crown, yeah. Yeah, that's a heck of a lineup right there. It is a great championship lineup. You got that right. You got that right. Um, so after that video package, we got Will Ospreay. He comes to the ring. Steve, I know you love doing your Will oh, Ospreay. Oh, I showed up today and asked, what you want to do? I said, send Shivani out there. I want to talk to the beautiful people of Boston on April 21st. This match means so much to me, bro. My entire career, all I wanted to do is emulate the career of Brian Danielson. Whether it was the stuff he did in Japan or his enthusiasm and independence, whether it's 50 people, 500 people, or 5,000 people, like double the people usually for a collision. Brian Danielson left it in the ring, brother, every single night for all these beautiful people. 
He says, I'm glad Brian, people are going to be, the Brits are going to be so pissed off. They're, they already got enough going on right now, the Brits, with, with, the, with the Kate stuff, you know? My goodness gracious. Is there anything new with that that you've discovered, Steve? Bro, the only thing, no, man. It's just they seem to, they seem to have, you know, completely uh, outed this whole affair situation. The idea now might be that, that uh, what's-her-face, the Duchess of uh, Chumley, uh, the Marioness of Chumley, whatever her name is, Rose something or another, might be knocked up with his kid, with William's kid. And, like, what's-her-face is like, "Mm mm-mm. So, like, the Duchess, the Marioness F of Chumley, might be trying to become the Queen of England, bro. Wow. And they're saying that when Charles told Harry to get out of here, Harry flew, like, across the pond. Saw that. Talked to Dad for 45 minutes and then took off. And the idea is Dad was like, hey, man, William's a mess. I'm going to try to him out of the king ascension thing i need you you on board with that and harry's like nah bro we don't like the want this royal shit we got you know uh, a freaking uh, uh spotify offering us 20 20 mil for podcasts he's like holy bro it's well, a mess you're really, on, you're really on top of this oh dude my for Should you be what friendo cast is about today Oh, dude, it's going to be, you know, the, the Kate Middleton conspiracy theories. Maggie sent me something about aliens now. now Are aliens involved in all this? Yeah, man, I'm convinced, though. You know, Boeing's probably involved in it, too. I'm telling you, the, the license ran out for the alien tech that was powering these Boeing spacecrafts. Well, they weren't spacecraft. They were terrestrial. And right. that's why they were, that's why they're flying out of this, you know, <laughs> doors flying off. It's because they don't have that alien adhesive. Anyways, Osprey continues. I'm glad Danielson's a fan of my work because he said uh, that I have been staring down the lens of a Japanese camera saying I'm the best wrestle in the world. He said, prove it. He said, allow me to remind you what you said to me a long time ago. After my match with Kenny Omega, everybody's talking about one move, the Tiger Driver 91. Um, he says, uh, where I lift my opponent by his arms and drop him on his nokas, which is the head. Uh, he says, no regard for their body, bruv. He says, you know what the most violent man on live TV said? He said, was it worth it? Speaking as a guy who was in the match with blood pissing out of my head and every single time my heart beat, more blood came out standing as the winner. Brian, I could say, yeah, bro, it was worth it. Uh, he continues. He says, the boys and the girls in the back uh, know it. And everybody here knows the phrase, restore the feeling. I am the feeling. This match is about reminding people. What AEW is, you put the best wrestler in the world against the best wrestler of 20th, 21, 21st century, and only one man walks out a winner. Let me tell you this. The one thing I've learned from Brian Danielson is that I got to have respect for the man who stands opposite me. But the moment I walk into this ring, it's your life or mine. I don't plan on dying, bro. April 21st, about finding out who's the best wrestler in the world. Let me tell you, because my name is Will Ospreay, and I'm on another level. This was a great promo. The intensity, the passion. Oh, gosh. Genuine. Genuine. Felt believable. It did. Yeah. You felt like every word that came out of his mouth was genuine. Yeah, man. It was very, it was really, really good. Mm -hmm. Really, really good. It's easy to see why people are getting behind him so quickly because he just comes out there super comfortable. Yep. Seemingly just says what's on, what's on his mind with uh, 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 such an insane level of passion and intensity. And then leaves. No stumbly bumblies. No, none. He's got those long plane rides to figure out what he's going to say. Maybe. Maybe. He looks like he's super comfortable. Maybe that's part of it, too, when he comes. I'm, I'm not, not just talking about his disposition. He had a T-shirt. He had his Adidas track pants on. He's got like, yeah, he had like a thing. He had like a he had like a, like like a, a jersey, soccer jersey. Like a soccer jersey on it. Yeah. said Billy Goat on it because that's his nickname. Yeah. yeah. Because William. Billy. Will. Billy. And they call him the Goat. Greatest Billy of all goat. time. It's very catchy. Anyways, it is. That's why he, that's how his logo was a goat head. It's a goat head. <laughs> so next we got Diana Parazzo promo. She says, Tony Mariah, if you think this is over between us after Tony tapped out and you DDT'd me on the ramp, then you've learned nothing about the virtuosa Diana Parazzo. This is a number of games you want to play. Let me pl a, a little, and let's play because I have no problem finding a partner meeting you both next week at Toronto. Since you already have a tag match Friday on Rampage, maybe we'll stick around and get a closer look. I suggest you watch for the shoe because it's heading straight up your ass. Up your ass. Up your ass. After that, we had Jay White versus Darby Allen. Hmm. It was great. This was great. 
Yeah, this is awesome. This is tons of fun. I thought the 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 angle after the match, after Jay gets the win, uh, with with the with the Bullet Club annihilating the acclaimed. Mm-hmm, yeah, maybe the timing didn't feel perfect, but I thought it was effective because it was vicious. The timing of like them pulling this, doing this angle now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm like, get just get done with it. Oh, I know. Just in terms of the like where the story thing. was going, which was nowhere. Yeah, which was nowhere. Get done, yeah, get it over yeah. with. But there was kind of no real. There were some subtle hints, but not a massive build to when it seems like you know, like like the end of There Will Be Blood, where the movie builds and builds and builds and then explodes like an oil well. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's yeah, how the movie no. is structured. This is just like have that Max getting mildly annoyed with Jay White for interrupting his raps. A couple of miscommunications, really and then suddenly they all break up. Yeah. Yeah. No. This was. Yeah. This. This. this you know what? Better just pff, get it done with. You know, do the thing. The, the beat down itself super effective. So. Of course, Darby's throwing his body all over the place doing crazy stuff. Oh, and God, missing that coffin drop on the... Oh, my God. Hit, crashing on the edge of the apron and then tumbling to the floor. Yeah, that sucked. Dude, you're about to do Everest. You need to be in peak physical condition. And, like, his back's still all cut up, and he's got tape all over him to cover up, like, sutures he has. And How White's... goth do you think his Everest climbing gear is going to be? Utmost. Yeah, I wonder if there's like anything to be said about like I mean you'd think it's all against snow so like black would be okay but do they also use you'd like think really you'd want something stuff? that pops though in the, in the event of like a blizzard or something red red volt volt maybe some reflective material I don't know I think probably a lot of reflective yeah so I don't know how how if it could be a hundred percent goth probably no mesh shirts outful when it's you know probably below zero for a good chunk of the time of God dang. Not probably not even including Windchill. Anyway, it's like True Detective Night Country. Did you finish that? No, I saw two episodes left. Nah. Everybody, everybody said I saw like really wide variety of things. Like some people said, "Oh my god, this is great," and then you were like, "Man, it's all right." So it like, really felt like an original idea. They kind of shoehorned the True Detective title yeah. and, and and sometimes you know I saw this the other day. This is this episode, by the way, is wildly tangential. I don't really. That's care. fine. I saw on Twitter the other day, somebody posted up like this great sequence from the A-Team movie. Uh Uh-huh. And they were like, man, you know, you get the the audience, America really did a disservice to this movie because it was a lot of fun. And I wonder if that was one case where make branding it the A-Team like as a remake did it a disservice. Like if they had simply got that same cast, the same script, didn't refer to it as the A team. Changed yeah. the backstory around a little bit so that it wasn't yeah. exactly. It wasn't the A team. It wasn't the A team. Yeah. Right. And you ch- you you, you turn to something else. Like remember the Expendables? It was like yeah a, a fresh thing, and it kind of blew up. Yeah. It's like sometimes just do something fresh. You yeah, know. You don't need to root it in an existing franchise because there is references to the overall True Detective mythology. Didn't need to be in there. That didn't feel like it ever connected. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like the spiral thing, which is from the very first season. Mm-hmm. The whole time is a flat circle thing. It's yeah. in there. Sorry if it spoils it for anybody. I mean, it's not like a major plot point. That's the point we're making. Yeah, right. Because I saw that, and I'm like, I, dude, honestly, I forgot that was even in there. Mm-hmm. And then, like in the first one, and because the first one, to me, the first one gets along solely on McConaughey and Woody Harrelson hanging out as those characters. The mythology is really good in the first season. It's cool, but the whole thing, it plays out. The final episode is just like a big boss battle. Yeah, I know. I and know. the big boss was, by and large, like somebody that was like, okay, who, what, who's this guy? What's yeah. the significance of him? You know, it's more fun when it's just McConaughey being a crazy guy and Woody Harrelson being the guy from, you know, White Men Can't Jump. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was saying, stop saying weird shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so yeah, Darby does a bunch of crazy stuff. He's looking for a coffin drop in the ring. Jay White rolls to the apron, so Darby's like, Fuck it. I'm going to do it anyways. Jay moves, so Darby hits the edge of the apron, tumbles to the floor. So Darby just barely beats the 10 count, and as soon as Darby's back in that ring, Jay White hits him with a Blade Runner to get the win. There's a lot of really good stuff before that, but there's so many instances of Jay White just chucking Darby around, Darby chucking himself around to try to get the advantage. So then the, the, the guns, Austin and Colton, come to the ring to celebrate with Jay. And so Bullet Club Gold turned their attention to Darby. Mm-hmm. Jay extends his hand. Like, hey, buddy, good buddy. match. So Darby reaches out to shake it, and Jay just gives him gun finger. That was a cool part. That was a cool bit there. There. It was. So then Gun Club, sorry, Bullet Club Gold, starts beating down Darby. 
Jay then slides a chair in the ring and then brings it a baseball bat. The guns wrap the chair around Darby's ankle. Jay's about to hit the chair with the bat. The acclaimed run out with Billy to make the save. And so Billy gets right in Jay White's face, and they start arguing <coughs> while Bowens and Caster help Darby up. And Billy and Jay are still arguing, so eventually Billy takes the bat from Jay, turns around. Jay picks up a chair and just blasts him. Because at this point, the acclaimed are already helping Darby out of the ring. Yeah. So the acclaimed run back in. They get laid out by the guns. Mm-hmm. Jay hits Billy with a blade runner, <clears throat> and then the guns toss Darby back in the ring. They put the chair. Jay puts the chair around his ankle and then blast it with the baseball bat. So he's going to be limping up Ever- Everest. I know. It's a, already a difficult climb, made much harder. Yeah, right? Yeah. Thanks to the switchblade. He's going to be, hey, Sherpa, help me out. I know. Anyways, uh, I always thought that was the funniest thing. It was like, you know, these European and American dudes like, oh, we're going to go climb Everest. We need help from people who do it every day. <laughs> these, you know, the locals. <laughs> They're like, yeah, hey, you want to climb Everest? Come on, come with me. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, it's like, it's like a ride yeah, bring, It's like, yeah, I'll bring you along. <laughs> you know? I'll bring you along. Exactly. It's like a ride at a carnival, you know. Oh, come on out this way. We'll go take you through a haunted house. I know, I know, I know, but. Whatever. I know, I know, I know. Anyways, uh, but like, so they I, could, like, how many people could do it without the Sherpas, though? You know, well, yeah, but like that, it makes it even more impressive if you do it without the Sherpas. Oh, I agree, I agree. Right? It's like a nigh impossible task. Right, exactly. You know, not everything is meant to be conquered on planet oh, Earth. Oh, I agree. Man. I agree with that. I agree. You know, with that. and how many how many Sherpas uh, have have uh, risked their life? Just so some some somebody could uh, be a tourist on Mount Everest, you know. I suspect that Sherpas are or guides. I don't even know at this point if Sherpa is like an appropriate term. I think it is. Um, I'm not educated on the subject, mm-hmm. but I wonder if at this point, like they've got to be, there's got to be some sort of uh, like log or something of people who have climbed Everest and like the parties, all everybody in in the, in the party's names. I would assume at this point. The guides are listed as like those parties, right? Like as part I of would, them. Yes, you would, you would, you would hope so that you would hope so sh- that the guides who are doing so much of the work, yeah, are right. getting the credit for said work, yeah, and not and not the people paying money to go up there and paying you know the Sherpas, sorry, the guides, uh, uh for their help are getting sole credit for for <laughs> for climbing up Everest and back down. You know what I mean? Uh, we've inadvertently, have we turned Sherpa, like now Sherpa in our lore is an offensive term. We're trying to be, you know. <laughs> Sherpa is offensive? <laughs> Adjust, let's see here. Uh, oh, okay. So there is a change.org petition. It says petition, stop misusing Sherpa. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, here we go. <laughs> Quora says, uh, okay, is the term Sherpa racist when used to describe someone who leads and carries people through a process if that person is not, in fact, from the ethnic group in eastern Nepal? Okay. All right. Um, okay, so the people who are actually our Sherpas have requested we not use their name in this sense. And it seems, okay, so I think the Sherpa people are typically the ones that help. But if they're not from the the ethnic group in Nepal, then we shouldn't refer to them as Sherpa. All right. So well, I'm going to keep on with guides. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> guides. Anyways, guides. You'd hope the guides are given their due credit, are compensated <laughs> immensely for their work. Um. But who knows? yeah, I, I wonder like the if there's that. like if they there's like a name for like the the the, the Gaijin versions of guides. <laughs> You know, the non-Sherpa guides. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do they exist? <sighs> this is that's all for, to put for... off talking about a Chris Jericho match, by the way. Yeah, he had a match. Him and Hook teamed up against Gates of Agony, and, the, and, and, and they won. Chris Jericho and Hook. I did like Gates of Agony's gear. Their entrance gear was amazing. I think uh, I fast-forwarded through it. What the it ring like? gear, there was purple and yellow. Oh, oh awesome. Great... They had matching ring gear. It was so cool. That's a that's a great that's a great uh, you know that's the constructor well constructor com was purple and volt yeah I mean it was, it was Lakers colors you know oh yeah man it's like my but new it looked it looked brand new it it's like this is my new witness eights there you go I the purple was brighter on their gear than than that but it popped I like that the it looked really good back thing right here is nice and plush too often this like digs into me so with mid tops do you ever have an issue with mid tops digging into your Achilles like right above your ankle bone 
Right above my ankle bone. So, yeah, right above where your ankle uh, joint no, is. No, it's been all right. It's been all right, all right. All right. Just curious. Just curious. Anyways. Yeah, this is a decent enough match. I like Gates of Agony. Um, yeah, they're cool. They're pretty cool. Uh, but then, yeah, of course, you can do Chris Jericho and Hook are going to get the win. So Hook locks on uh, a red rum, or tries to on Khan. Khan. Uh, Jericho then gets in and puts Khan in the Lion Tamer. So we got red rum from Hook. Lion Tamer, well, actually, it was Walls of Jericho, sorry, um, from Jericho. But the Jericho notices that Toa Leona is trying to get back of the ring, hits him with the drop kick, and then Hook rolls Khan back over. And Khan taps the red rope. Correct. Uh, after that, we had a Kyle O'Reilly interview. He's very laid back. It's almost shades of cool Kyle. It's definitely cool Kyle. Okay. All right. He's so mellow. Sure. Yeah. He's very mellow. But he's not, he's also not like halfway snarky. You know, like yeah. cool Kyle was like, mm, you know. Yeah, that's true. So he says, uh, for two years, the thought of never wrestling again, the least of my problems. There was a span where I physically couldn't pick up my daughter, and they were the darkest days of my life. But my neck got better. My arm got better. Now that I'm here and I look at the landscape of AEW roster, I just wonder if I can still hang. It's probably the most competitive roster in the history of the sport. But then I look at a guy that I'm impressed by, a guy I've had my sights set on, so to speak. A guy who can bring out that Kyle O'Reilly. So, Bounty Hunter Brian Keith, you and I have a duel this Saturday on Collision. My first match back in almost two years in my home country, Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. And Kyle! Then Ro- Go! So, Roger Camry walks in with the kingdom and says, what's up, dude? I just want to say that I know I, you know how much respect I have for you. You know how much love I have for you. And if you want to do this on your own do it on your own so they shake hands kyle fist bumps the kingdom and they leave and kyle says yeah first match back back saturday i gotta do it on my own uh and then after that we had a video package for riho willow and then we see riho walk uh, warming up backstage and mercedes walks up says hello i'm mercedes monet i'm looking forward to your match tonight and then uh we had a hook jericho interview where jericho's being all serious, and he's like, "Hey, just just, just trying to just, just being the momentum vampire." I want to know what totally. it was. I want to know what it was like to be in the ring with you, Hook, and uh, now I want to be in the ring against you uh, in the ring. So, how about next week on Dynamite in Toronto? Will you you, you be in the match with me, Hook? Colin Robinson. Colin <laughs> Robinson. And then Hook says, "Bet." Yes. Good. I know, dude. It's so. It's like it's just. It really Jericho is. talks these days. I know. I know. You can tell he knows too. Oh, he absolutely <laughs> knows. He knows he's not really doing anything. <laughs> he knows he's not doing a damn thing. It's a long. It's it's a long way from the inner circle days, man. It really is. It really is. We had our main event: Willow Nightingale taking on Riho. This match was tons of fun. Great bout. Oh yeah, this is awesome. Fantastic stuff. Uh, finishing sequence. Saw Willow Duck Meteora. They're trading some strikes. Willow. Hits a huge clothesline. Is looking for a Death Valley driver. Riho counters with a roll-up. Or attempts to. Willow powers her up, though. And hits more or less like a deadlift doctor bomb to get the win. It was really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So no, then after the match, rad. Willow goes over and checks on. Riho gives her a hug. They're celebrating in the ring. Or she's celebrating in the ring. Lights go down. They come back up. Julia Hart standing at the foot of the ramp. So Willow's focused on her. Sky Blue from behind hits Willow with a chop block. Her and Julia attack. Uh, Sky then holds up Julia while uh, Sky holds up Willow. Sorry, while Julia gets the TBS tile about the blaster with it. Then CEO, CEO, Mercedes Monet comes to the ring to make the save. She drops Sky Blue with the forearm on the ramp, slides in the ring, kicks Julia, hits her with her finish, then turns to Willow because she said earlier she's got unfinished business with Willow. And then Willow walks over and raises her hand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that was Dynamite. And that was your Dynamite. Would you like to... Have... Oh, man, we forgot to mention the Friendo Club setup, Larson. Oh, we did. An hour into this show. We spent... He had so many tangents. We had so many tangents. That's all right. So here's the deal. We got it. We got... We got... It's basically, uh, you know, I don't know. Like, it's, I want to say it's like a fan club kind of thing. <laughs> Except you don't get a Dakota ring, but we're working on that. We're working it's, on it. Called the Friendo Club setup. It's very simple, man. You get access to bonus episodes, Friendo Cast, every single week. You get access to the question threads that we're about to read right now. 
We also got access to the Big Blue Predictions Challenge. Of course, we got WrestleMania coming up in about three weeks now, and two weeks now. And uh, we got this huge predictions challenge for WrestleMania. You can become the Big Blue Predictions Champion and win the Big Blue Predictions winner hat right here. This is going to go out to Muted Mayday because he's the current Big Blue Predictions Champion. But you can get your own one of these, and it's exclusive to Big Blue Predictions Champions. And the only way you can participate in the huge predictions challenge is by going to patreon.com slash Stephen Larson and choosing the Friendo Club setup there or right here at youtube.com slash Stephen Larson. Click join, become a YouTube channel member. It's $5 either way. You get the same things, bonus episodes, access to our question threads, and of course, access to participating in the big blue predictions challenge while we're talking about stuff. Hit that subscribe button, hit the notify bell so you always know when we're live or we have a new video, or also hit that thumbs up, slide button, really helps grow going in raw, plus we like it for the validation, um, and then we've also got another channel, Friendo Club Wrestling, it's uh, right here on the YouTube, you can check it out, It's we got a link to it at the, you know, the, the homepage of our channel here. Or just do a search on YouTube for Friendo Club Wrestling and pff, yeah. we're right there. It's a bunch right of short form content. Lars and I have a lot of fun with that channel. We'll do most of it live here in the studio. So, yeah. Correct. Not live. Together. Together. In person. I should say Together. in person. It is live for us. It is. We're living in the moment, yes. You got it right. Exactly. Got that right. Anyways, can I ask you some questions? Yeah, I'll bring up the question thread on the YouTubes. Uh, Jimmy Thomas here says, would Okada, sorry, with, would Okada with the Continental Championship elevate his value or decrease his value? I mean, it's a title that is new. Eddie's really popular with the AEW fan base. He's booked relatively strongly. He's beat Danielson twice. I mean, that's something. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I don't see how Okada being Continental Champion would decrease his value. You put him on someone who's doing really good work who the crowd is into, especially the the portion of the crowd who are familiar with him. And if he's going out there and putting on awesome matches, and as you said, at the end of this match, after he beats Eddie, just does something that's super violent. Let me ask you this. Give me the first five title defenses after Okada's won this thing that'll really solidify it as, like, the title. Pack. Yeah. Um... Have Hangman challenge for it. Ooh, okay. All right. So Ooh, that's pack, a good you one. Have Hangman. That's Two more, and then, and then Kenny. Mox. Mox. I don't think we ever got... Do we got Okada versus... Just keep Jericho out of it. We no ask Jericho. that question all the time, and we still don't got, know. I don't know if you ever got Okada, Mox, one of them. I don't did. know if don't we did. Um, but yeah, Mox. Claudio. This is going to be a really good match. <laughs> Claudio. Um, but mainly Mox. Yeah, mainly um, Mox. And, uh, and when Kenny comes back. And then when Kenny comes back, yeah. Yeah. Because those are big matches. Those are yeah. big matches. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Andre Zimple here asked, do you think Tony learned his lesson with Phil after calling him plus Delta and sending him almost immediately to the title picture and won't repeat history with Mercedes in that regard? I know after Punk beat Darby, he did the he did the. I want to. Talk, I'm not going to say discount double check anymore, given who it's referencing. Yeah, don't do that. No, I'm not going to do that anymore. You know, he was saying, "Hey, I want title after that match." It was several months before he actually had a title match. It was from he debuted in August. It wasn't until the following May that he had a title match. What's that? Nine months. So yeah, it wasn't right. like he immediately jumped into the title picture. I will say this, generally speaking, I guarantee you, Tony Khan learned some lessons off over the CM Punk yes, stuff. I would think guarantee so. Guarantee you that. Uh, your boy says, uh, past three years have been a doozy, huh? What's one thing you would tell your past self in 2020, in, in 2020 during peak lockdown era that would make them the most excited to push through and see the other side? Wow. I would say this. This is something that 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 in hindsight I wish I had done better. When I was in, when we were all in isolation, we were all in lockdown. I isolated myself too much, oh. in that knowing that I couldn't really see anybody. I'm talking about like my social circle, essentially. Yeah, right. Like we talked basically every day because we, you know, we were working. Mm-hmm. You know, and and while I would still text people, obviously I, I, 
I wish I hadn't necessarily isolated myself from my social circle to such degree that I got comfortable essentially being by myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Because yeah. it's been hard to reacclimate. That. Yeah. Like I don't yeah. feel like I, I don't feel like I know how to socialize really anymore. Oh yeah. Yeah. I just it's been feel hard. I feel slower thinking that today. I was like, man, my reactions my reaction time is so much slower and I honestly think that's because of long I think it's not long COVID. I think it's just because of COVID brain. I really do. Could be. <laughs> I mean, some of it might be age, but I think some of it, I think COVID fucks your brain up. Um, oh, yeah. I think, you know, that's been kind of. So, uh, okay. So to keep it completely real, I'm going to take anything and everything that has to do with my dad out of this <laughs> because there's a million things I'd love to tell myself <laughs> about that situation. Um, so I'll take that out of it. Um, uh, I, I'll, 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 I will stick with because, you know, yours is it's a it's a very it's a very personal answer. Um I will. I'll stick to wrestling then. All right. Um, oh, is this is this something that that was related to wrestling or just generally speaking? No, no. I he doesn't. He doesn't say. He, no, okay. he doesn't say. He says the last three have been a doozy. Um, I'll say this as it pertains to uh, our business and what we do. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that there were a lot of positives that came out of if i can go back and talk to me in march or april of 2020 i would say trust your instincts on pretty much everything because i think we handled it really well and pandemic really did allow us to forge that bond with the enforcer and that's mm -hmm. something that i'll always appreciate and cherish yep. Um, we did some collaborations with church of Joshi, yep. um, the church of friendos. I thought that was awesome. Um, and I think that we were able to develop some decent friendships along the way because of pandemic and that stuff that I wouldn't give up. And I honestly think that the way we were doing things before, I think that having that office, I thought was a good learning lesson. And I think it taught us that, you know what, I think there's a good mix of, you know, doing things remotely um, and in person that I think works really, really well for us. And so yeah. I and, and and honestly, so much of that is just like trial and error and going off of instinct. What feels good? What feels right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the fact that, hey, we, we, we got it pretty good in the end, um, you know, as it pertains to like our business and how we handle things and, and how mm -hmm. we do things. Um, I'm really happy with where we are right now. Yeah. And a lot of that came from pandemic. You know, I don't know if we might maybe still be. I don't know if we ever would approach the subject of let's I think at a certain point, you know, dude, with how bad those raw episodes were. Yeah. And doing those episodes late at night. um, Man, that sucked. That and I, I, I feel like at a certain point we realized we've built up our audience to the point where. They're not going to go scrambling if we wait till the next day yeah, yeah. to do the show. They're yeah. not going to run away. No. And so if something makes our life and our show better because we're a bit more well rested, mm -hmm. um, then then do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. totally. Um, Blake Whitehouse says, which do you think damaged the acclaims aura the most, Bang Bang Scissor Gang or Max Caster's Twitter activities? Oh, man. Um, I, I, I'd, I'd honestly, I, I would say this. I would say the, the, the creative of the acclaimed. I mean, look, dude. <clears throat> I've seen, I've seen, you know, Max Caster's unfortunate social media activity i've seen you know some of his raps seem you know like that there was that one in the indie circuit i think you referenced vince or something like that yeah and you know that that stuff that i i feel like doesn't need to be out there but the bottom line is the main my main exposure to max caster is on television you know i don't follow him on social media when when he does some but i i don't think that stuff is it's unfortunate, but it's not that it doesn't really sully him that much in my mind. It really doesn't. 
it's like, okay, well, you're trying to be edgy. I get it. It's not really, it doesn't really work for me, but I don't give a shit. Beyond that, I haven't really seen a whole lot of what people might be referring to, I don't think. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that the acclaims creative has been dog shit. And I think the Bang Bang Scissor Gang might have been a good idea, but there was like no, no good execution of it. It's no, been bad. they got together to take on the Undisputed Kingdom and never once crossed paths with the Undisputed Kingdom. Yeah, it was it was it was a weird idea in the first place. It really didn't make any sense. No. And the acclaimed have been misused since they're since they're since they lost Failed. the tag titles. Yep. 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 Uh B Man here says Seth Rollins were to dedicate a move to Triple H like the Young Bucks did with the Tony Khan driver. What would the move be? What would he call it? Oh yeah. Some sort of pedigree variation, right? Maybe, yeah. Call it the curtain call. There you go. That's good. That's good. Is there like a some sort of variation of a pedigree stomp he could do? Sort of. He gets their arms up. <laughs> Somehow could torch himself so you could stomp him while he goes down with the pedigree. Yeah, right. <laughs> if anybody could do it, it could be him. Maybe. <laughs> All that Maybe. CrossFit. Maybe. That would be something else. Uh. You got any over there on the YouTube, Steve? Uh, we'll end on this. Actually, this one is this is a name I haven't heard before. Agent Boy Band SLG says, "Where do you see wrestling at in the next five years for the uh, in the USA? Bigger like the Attitude Era or another early 2010s era? I don't think it's going to be an early 2010s era because I think that Vince was at his lowest of lows, and that's saying something. That, that the is. guest host shit." God, so much of it was so bad. Yeah, he was, was really grasping at, you know, just throwing shit against the wall to see what would stick, and it was yeah. awful. It was terrible. It was terrible. I, mean, I, I, I don't. I mean, those are kind of two extremes, you know. Mm -hmm, yeah. yeah. Obviously, add to Darrow. You can make the the argument that was when wrestling was never more popular, especially in terms of the mainstream. Will they ever get there again? The way entertainment consumed now is so much different than it was in ninety eight, ninety nine. Yeah. And very few things really managed to capture the zeitgeist well, like anything did back then. It doesn't happen yeah. very often. Let's say it no, doesn't it ever doesn't. happen. It just doesn't happen very often. Yeah. Um, and so are we going to see episodes of Raw get four or five, six million viewers again? No. But We're not even uh, going to see the numbers because of Netflix. Exactly. You know, and, and so... In the next five years, it'll probably be a situation where WWE is kind of doing what they're doing now because it's wildly successful for them. You know, they they got two huge TV deals. They're getting massive amounts of money to have pay-per-views internationally. They're going to do more of that. They're going to do yeah. more of what's working for them now. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I guess the question is, is AEW going to continue to kind of stagnate in terms of ratings and, 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 and you know attendance and whatnot? Or with the influx of talent, with the seemingly, you know, what we see in this year, renewed focus on kind of what AEW has historically done best. Is this going to lead to some sustained growth for the company? You know, if they get a new TV deal for, you know, you assume a lot more money, is that going to, is Warner Brothers Discovery going to get even more behind it, promote it more? I mean, it was interesting. There was a commercial last night during Dynamite where it had several talents in there. Some of them were talking about, you know, like their paths becoming wrestlers. It was it was a different approach to marketing. It wasn't just all like action shots and stuff like that. They were trying to introduce these characters to prospect. I know it was on during Dynamite, but anyways, I'm guessing it's going to air at other times. Mm -hmm. Introduce an audience to these characters and not just rely exclusively on, wow, look at this destroyer. Look mm -hmm, at this crazy yeah. uh, flipping DDT someone did, you know? Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, and so if they've decided from a marketing standpoint we're not going to market the company exclusively around best wrestling in the world we'll still offer that we'll still feature that but we got to market around our characters because mm -hmm, yeah. that's what people are going to gravitate towards yeah and forge yeah. those bonds with you know like i like will osprey's wrestling a lot i think he's really come around to being a really good promo i don't know if there's necessarily anything about his character per se right now that I'm like, oh, I'm super invested in what he does. I'm invested in what he does because he gets in the ring. He does stuff. He puts on amazing matches. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, it'll be interesting. I'd, I'd love to see at some point, and I hope they do it sooner than later. You know, right now you've got an obvious story thread with Will Ospreay and Danielson, and it's simple. It's, I'm great wrestler, you're a great wrestler. We're both known as, like, the greatest wrestlers. Let's go this ahead and yeah. have a match. It yeah. needs to move beyond that. And Swerve has done a great job in moving beyond, I'm just good wrestler, you yeah. know, going to people's homes and threatening their children and, and, and cutting up Nick Wayne, and then making his transition to, to good guy. He sort of moved beyond, hey, I'm good wrestler guy. He's yeah. a three-dimensional character. Well, his, his, going into any feud, he always like presents it as if, hey, this is business to me. I'm not making it personal, but it always ends up being personal. Yeah, I know. And exactly. it needs to be personal. You and know? he always finds a really good angle to take on that stuff. Yeah. And so um, I think those are the characters that are going to resonate the most. I can't wait for Osprey to get to that point because yes. I have no doubt he's got the capability of getting absolutely, to that point. Absolutely, absolutely. Great thing about WWE is that even if, you know, and again, I'm not trying, I'm just trying to be realistic here. I have no idea how this lawsuit is going to affect the personnel in WWE. Yeah. If somehow, some way it does end up affecting Triple H or if something else affects Triple H and he's out, there are a number of names that are kind of interesting for people who can fill that spot that might be really good at that, at booking, at creative. Mm -hmm. HBK, CM Punk, Brian Gewertz. You know, Scott those are three. Maybe if, if he hasn't landed someplace else. Yeah, that's a great name right there. Yeah. There are a number of people out there who could take that top creative spot. That could be very interesting. That might have their own spin and have the experience to book long term professional wrestling in a way that would leave their own stamp on it. Um, so I think that or it could go bad, you know. So in five years, we have no idea what it's going to look like. I hope I really hope that there's a strong creative vision behind both companies and they both absolutely kill it. In which case, maybe it will, you know, break through and, and people will be dying to turn on Netflix to watch, you know, WWE or they'll be dying to turn on TBS to watch the, to watch the latest dynamite. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of really good names in both companies, mm -hmm. uh, both in front of and behind the scenes. So hopefully Tony Khan will sort of figure out the algorithm of, you know, what decisions to make based on his creative staff there and what recommendations they make. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to seeing where the next five years of wrestling leads us, you know? Definitely, definitely. I mean, because it, it, basically every metric, wrestling has never been more profitable for at least the True. major companies than it is right now. Yeah, yeah. And I think there's there's a lot of positives going forward into the future, um, more, I think, so than, than the negatives. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyways, that's going to do it for the show today. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate it. Until next time, we'll see you around. We got cues, Larson. They get, they're they giving us cues they keep now. keep doing this. It was, it, that was a cues. moment in time. It's Sorry. Past, cues. Past Q. How, what's, what's the thing that they do? Oh, they do this. Let's wrap it up, yeah. <laughs> wrap it up, Larson. <laughs>